So you say you're ready to do your own Battleborn battery solar installation from top to bottom, start to finish. Maybe you're watching this video because you're going to do a Battleborn battery installation for somebody else. And you just wanna make sure all of your I's are dotted and T's are crossed before you get started or you've run into some kind of a jam somewhere in the install and you're rifling through videos on YouTube trying to find the right answers. Whatever the case may be, we're gonna do this. And I'm gonna show you everything. I'm gonna show you everything right down to the finest detail to make sure that it's right, that it operates properly, and that it's safe. But I gotta warn you going in, I'm gonna have to use terms like watts, amps, volts, current, breakers. I'm gonna have to talk about wiring in series opposed to wiring in parallel and what the differences are. I wish it didn't have to be that way. I would like to say this thingamajig hooks up to this doohickey and then you connect it to this gizmo and then some kind of witchcraft happens from the sun. I would totally like to be able to say it like that, but I wouldn't be doing you a service if I didn't use the right nomenclature through the process of doing this. Now we're gonna break this up into small steps and I'm gonna show you everything. Remember, you can go back and review this video if you want to, you can pause it, you can write notes. I'm gonna do everything I can to show you fine details. Most of my stuff I put out, you guys know I try to be concise, blow through the bullet points and not get into the fine minutia can't do that in this video. In order for us to make this right, I've got to get into the fine minutia. But it's going to be fun. You're going to have a good feeling of self-satisfaction when it's all over with, and it's going to be done right. Okay, kid, you think you're ready for the big show? Here we go. First things first, we should probably talk about my credentials. Who am I and what business do I have talking about things like AC, DC, electric, current, amps, watts, all that jazz. Let's be clear going in up front. I have absolutely no credentials. Even the credentials that I have, I'm not gonna talk about because I don't wanna come from that place. What matters is that we do this right. The things I know, the stuff I've learned has been through trial and error, stuff I've gleaned from research. Big shout out to Lee Blake and Ron Moak. They've been a great help and I've always got Battleborn's technical support department to have my back. Those guys are rock stars when it comes to this kind of stuff. And if I've got Battleborn's technical support department having my back, that means that you have Battleborn's technical support department having your back. Don't be bashful to call them if you have questions. They're super cool, they know their stuff, and they wanna see the stuff installed right. And they're patient. Let's start at the beginning. Imagine a contractor bought a huge piece of land, subdivided it up, put a bunch of houses on it. They're nice houses, they're beautiful. They look up to date and gorgeous, but none of the houses have any electrical installed in them. There's no wall outlets to plug in your refrigerator. There's no light switches to turn on your light. They just didn't install any electricity at all. That seems kind of ridiculous, doesn't it? Like the person who buys that home has got a become an electrician and know how to do all that stuff kind of seems funny but it's a very good analogy on what's happening with us right here we've bought a rig whether it's a school bus a shuttle bus a box truck something that's on wheels that we're going to make into a home with electricity and now somehow we've got to be some kind of electrical know-it-alls to make the whole thing work that's the position we find ourselves in but it's okay I'm gonna show you how to do it and how to make it work. And if you don't understand some of the things I'm talking about, you can certainly contact me down in the comments. Battleborn is always there for their technical support. Their number's down in the notes. And if nothing else, just do it exactly how I did it. And you don't have to necessarily understand the fine minutia behind it. It's gonna work, but you gotta do it exactly the way I said it. Please don't look at this video as a guideline and then start substituting what I'm using for inferior parts because you're trying to save a buck. It could cause a fire, it could cause a lot of damage. We just don't even wanna go there.
there's a few different approaches we could take to this. Since we're not in person talking about it and writing it all down on a list, what, what you plan on running, I'm going to start from the place of the most common things that folks want to run when they're setting up a vehicle to be lived in. And that is going to be either a Max or a Fantastic Fan, a refrigerator, probably a laptop, TV, want to charge your cell phone. You may want to power a little Wi-Fi jetpack. Now we can go online and pull up those items and see how much juice they draw, how much current. Current and amps are the same thing. We want to know how many amps they draw. Think of amps as money in the bank and think of those Battleborn batteries as th the amps in one battery is 100 amps. So that's $100 that you've got that day to spend, okay? And a refrigerator is going to typically spend about 30 amps a day. Mm, give or take and so that's thirty dollars of that hundred amps that is going to get paid for from the uh, from the Battleborn so we've got to take that out of that account and now we're down to 70 uh, if we run a max fan all day or a fantastic fan all day it depends on the setting if we've got it on a high setting it's going to pull more amps and it's going to use more of those out of the battery all day long also we have to consider when the Sun is hitting the panels we're gleaning power straight off of those panels during the day in the sun. So what we do is we just make our best guess at what we're going to need based on what we want to run and then we set up a system that can support it knowing that we're going to have days where there's no sun, there's going to be problems with uh, trees and clouds, you know, there's a lot of variables. Instead of me just talking about a refrigerator runs on a third cycle and pulls about three amps an hour and a fantastic fan you know, pulls this many amps. I'm going to show you to, I, because I want to give you an idea of how this works. I want to give you a really deep understanding on how this stuff works. And so in order for me to show you that, I'm going to use a voltmeter. Now let me show you, you're going to, if you're going to do your own installation, you need a voltmeter and not just any voltmeter. It's got to be AC and DC. And you want one that has this little clip on it because we can use this clip over a wire to tell us how many amps we're drawing. We just need to make sure that we're on the right setting and that it's using DC amps in the case where we're pulling DC and AC amps in the case where we're pulling AC. When you buy this, it's going to come with these wires. See, they, they're kind of like points and they plug in down here. What I've done and what I would recommend, just go online and get yourself some aftermarket wires, just the same as the other ones. They clip in just the same, but they have alligator clips on the end. See that? This comes in super handy when I'm trying to get readings on things and I don't have two hands to put on the uh, the pins and then also hold the meter and then also hold this other thing over here. So I really recommend if you get yourself a voltmeter, get, get one like this and go ahead and pick up the, uh, the wires that have the alligator clips. Now with that said, we don't need the alligator clips to do what we're going to do. And I'm going to take you inside and we're going to take a look at what a Dometic refrigerator pulls in amps, and we're gonna look at a Alpacool or a Extreme Power, which is a Chinese import refrigerator. We're gonna look at that, and then we're gonna look at a fantastic fan. Then we'll take a couple of looks online at what your laptop might pull, what your TV might pull, and get ideas there too. We're just trying to get some kind of a composite where we add up all of the information and get an idea how many batteries we're going to need and then how many solar panels we're going to need to support those batteries. So let's head inside. We're just going to test a couple of the most common appliances that you might install in your van, schoolie, whatever, to get an idea of how much current or how many amps these things pull. So let's get started with the extreme power. The most important thing we need to make sure of is that it's running so we can get an idea of what, how much power it's using. And I can hear it. It's really quiet. I know it's running. If it wasn't, I could probably accelerate it running by just opening the door and letting some of that cold air out until it kicked on. I take my meter and I turn it on DC 40. That means the high limit on it is 40 that it's going to be registering. I take my wire. I can't clip this thing over both wires. You know, they're kind of bound together and get an accurate reading. They've got to be separated. Well, when I wired this together, I separated them to do that. So that's going to be easy. Let's take a look. With my amp meter set to DC, 40 amps, I'm going to use this clip here and clip on one side of these wires. And I see we're pulling 2.5 amps on this refrigerator. 
And it runs on about a third cycle, which means a third of the day, which is eight hours. And so we can count on using about 2.5 amps, roughly eight hours a day. So we've got to add that math up. That is the extreme power. If you want to see a video that I did reviewing this, you can click the button up above and I run through everything about the extreme power. It's been running great. Everything's cool with it. And it comes in, at least at the time of the video, at around 300 bucks. Let's have a look at how much power the Dometic is using right now. We've already got our amp meter set on DC volts. I clip one side and it's showing 0, 0.00, which means it's off. By the way, it doesn't matter which side of the wire you clip onto, you'll, you're gonna get an accurate reading. There'll just be a negative on it if you're on the negative side and uh, nothing, I don't think there's a positive on the positive side. But it doesn't matter. Whatever reading you get is that's how much you're pulling. And it doesn't matter which wire that you clip onto. But this thing is not cycling, so we have to get it to cycle. Aha! Uh -huh, it just kicked on. With it just kicking on, we're pulling 4.5 amps. And we know we're on the positive side because there isn't a negative in front of that number. So now 4.3 amps. That gives us an idea of what a Dometic would draw about a third of the time during the day. Now you can wrap your refrigerators with uh, moving blankets. You can w wrap them up with uh, grandma's old quilt, whatever you want. The more insulation you put inside or around these uh, refrigerators, the less they'll run. We definitely don't want to put it in a situation where the sun is coming in your vehicle and hitting right on it during the day. We want to try to avoid that. A little side note. All right, let's check out the fantastic fan and see how much juice it's pulling. This should be relatively easy. I'm gonna turn the fan on and it's gonna start on full blast. I come back over here and clip onto my wire and I see that I am pulling 2.67 amps with it on full blast. Now remember, this doesn't run on a third cycle. So if we ran it all day, it'd be pulling about 2.6 amps all day. That's gonna accumulate. So we're gonna want more battery. Let's slow it down a little bit. Maybe we don't want to run it all day. Let's see what happens. There's 14 settings on this particular fan. I just set it down several, and now it's kind of just chilling on cruise control, pulling 0.7 amps, so under one full amp. But if that was 24 hours, that would be, you know, 0.7 amps times 24 hours. Just got to figure that stuff out and keep it in mind. I also have an air conditioner here. I am not going to get into what it takes to run an air conditioner. I think that's kind of a specialty uh, video on its own. And there is a link right above you can click on where I run through how I'm pulling off running an air conditioner. And with that, I didn't want you to hear the sound of it. But now i got to turn this sucker back on. Those are a couple of main things you're going to want to run in most vehicles. And we learned how to use a voltmeter to test for amps. So that was pretty cool. Let's take a look at some of the power requirements of some of the other typical things that you might have in your vehicle. We'll do that online. With just a quick search on the internet, we can see that a typical laptop is going to use somewhere around 0.8 amps per hour on the high side. Now we can certainly run through item by item using our best guess at what you might be using and add up all of the power needs of those things. But rather than get bogged down in that, let's just go ahead and add up a few things. A good website is this reference here. I'll put the link down in the notes. Go here. It's got a... Uh, electrical calculator that we can type in watts and volts or amps basically we just type in two of these three values and it gives you the third value i've used this a lot trying to troubleshoot problems over the years and it also runs into what are amps volts and watts so we can just click over and take a deeper dive into that if we want but let's not get bogged down in this item that item just know get what you want run what you want you want to maybe stay away from things that are using heat, like a blow dryer or a quartz heater. Those tend to use an awful lot of power. If there's substitutions for those, such as a propane heater or one of those diesel heaters that have just come out in the last few years, those are pretty good. We can use things uh, if we want to in small doses, like a coffee maker. But let's try to stay away from things that uh, generate heat with electricity. And let's just go ahead and add up uh, our best guess at a few different things and get this uh, and wrap this part of the project up.